Hi, here we are again, working on a passenger car. So we cut the window openings out in previous videos and making the bottoms here. And now what I've done, I didn't take any record of this on, on tape, but I put the bolsters on the wood bottoms and I mounted the steps on the four corners and the coupler poppets. That's just nothing more than just bolting them down with some bolts and stuff. Um, I got the ends mounted. I got the sides started to get clamped up and adjust them up and, you know, uh, line them up. And uh, I use these um, long throat, deep throat clamps here that are able to go over all the way down so that you can tighten it up. I guess there's an angle on the floor here. There's a, an inch and a half by an inch and a half angle bolted to the floor down here. And then this row of rivets right here, the second row up, gets the uh, rivets that actually hold it to the base. I got uh, one bolt, quarter inch bolt every uh, foot, and then I use what's called a, a blind nut, and I'll get one so you can see what that's about. And they work out pretty good. You can get those from micro fasteners in Flemington, New Jersey, and uh, they have a little, they have little metal tits on them. You can see them here. And what that does is uh, it bites into the wood and then stays underneath and flushes it off so you don't see any of the rip, uh, you don't see any of the nuts under there. It makes it a cleaner looking job. And uh, so what I do, I line it up, clamps, the red clamps here, and, and then once I get it all lined up, I start to put the rivets in. Now what I did beginning with, I put three rivets here, one, two, three in the corners. I pull the corners tight clamps, you know, pull them tight to the other corner. Then wherever the clamp was, I put, a, drill the hole and put a Clico in here. I use the Clicos. That kind of holds it together. Now what I'm going to do is in between each Clico, I'm going to put a ribbon. And I'm doing that already here. Okay, and once I get them all in all the way down, then where the Clicos are, I'll put the rivets. And that's all I'll do for now. By the way, this is a dummy row of rivets that I put in um, off on the bench over here. I just put them off the car and they, they're blind into the wood here rather than use the nails I mentioned earlier. Splits the wood. I put a dummy row of rivets and I put a groove in the wood there with the router uh, in order to take the head of the rivet clean the, so it comes out flush. Now I'll get this side done. I'll get that side all complete and then I'll start to rivet this. Once I get this whole row of rivet on both sides all the way around uh, where the door connects to the side and where the side connects to the end. I get that all done. The very final thing we're going to do is put these paint in the neck. Little strips on here with the window strips that we're making on the white metal casting machine. We're going to be doing that hopefully in a week or so and I'll show that on a different video. But later on there's a metal uh, strip that goes up here. Metal extrusion. Aluminum extrusion which is right here. Goes on top of here like this. top there. Now, the plans call for rivets every half inch all the way down with the rivet head showing out this way. I think that looks kind of stupid. So what I do is put the rivets back from this way with the head, the round part of the head's in here, and then I countersink this side and flush it off and then sand it off. And I, you don't really need them every foot or so because this is nothing more than a stiffener. And it just simulates the edge, makes it nice so that people can't, don't cut their hands on the on the sharp edges, so it makes a nice job if you're going to use a variety of parts, of course. And uh, also, we have the roof ends here, the castings, aluminum castings go here. I'm using the monitor the roof end. There's one, and one goes down the other end. Uh, cars are coming along. I hope to get these done so we can use them at Washakum Meet coming up August 28th, which is the end of the summer. Got about two months. To finish them, but I don't don't forget I got to do the trucks as well. I got to I've got the trucks made, but I got to rig them up with the brake rigging, and I'm working on that design. I'm going to start doing that as soon as I get these uh, white metal castings done in about a week or so. I should have all the strips for the windows, and I got to put all those on. So they're um, not it's not um, hard work. It's just a lot of work. It's uh, you know riveting, and now I'm going to mention one other thing about riveting. I use a um, hammer 
and, and of course the anvil. Now you're going to say, oh, why don't you use the air? I don't like the air. Number one is, you got a heavy air gun you're holding, rivet machine, the air compressor going off all the time. I don't like a lot of noise. The gun is heavy. A lot of reasons. I had to use the gun inside here. I can do them so quick with this hammer. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing. bing. You got to stop and put the rivet. You got to drill the hole. You got to stop and put the rivet in. Then you got to pick up this. All right, you're going to say it's not that heavy. Yeah, it is heavy. After 10,000 rivets, it gets pretty heavy. And then you got to sit here, got to reach out, twist your arm around to get in there to do that or do it from the outside. And then if it jumps off the rivet, if it jumps off the rivet, it, it puts little marks in the woman. Smiles, I call. So, some guys have success with them. Bruce Saylor, right in front of mine. Uh, Jim Sammons, another friend of mine. I see Jack Bodeman using that air gun. But me, I could, the good old hammer. I built this, made this hammer, which has a, a, a punch built right into it. So I can get in the tight spots. I can flip it either way. I've used this hammer from that original car that you see. The green car that we always use. I built that hammer, this hammer for that car. And this dolly, which is has interchangeable anvils. I can pull this anvil out and put a different one in. But this is the original weight that I use. The other thing, the, draw, the drawings call for using drive rivets on these holes. I see absolutely no reason to use drive screws anywhere in live steam work other than used for a blind hole. These guys use them to put their smoke, they put them in their smoke box, they put them in, they build a whole tender with dry rivets. I know somebody's going to say up there, look, the idea is you have to drill a hole anyway. Why not put a through rivet and beat it over? Now, the point is, dry screws one have to have an exactly the right size hole, exactly. If it's too small, it doesn't work. If it's too big, you split the head. And believe me, those things are hardened steel. They're not soft, and you can't get them out that easy. They're a little bit tough to get out. So I only use those when it's absolutely necessary. I can't get a rivet and get in the inside to beat it. Uh, whether you head it over, whether you beat it flat, whatever. I just don't see any reason for using drive screws whatsoever. They're ex pretty expensive, for one thing. They're hard to hold. They're real small. I have bad fingers because when I have arthritis and this and that. I can use, get, pick up their co copper rivet, stick it in a hole, and that's it. So I'm going to do a couple of rivets now. By the way, I'm using this the good old Fordham tool for doing the rivets, and that works out pretty good. Um, I want to get, get the rivet thing over here, and I'll drill a hole and do, do one for you. Go right through, get a rivet. Put it in the hole, to find out where the hole is. Put it in the hole, get the backer upper. Put it on there, I can a couple times and see it. That's it. Sitting there, boop, boop. Look, you guys out there that use them, God bless you. I don't like them. I use 10 million, I must have done 10 million rivets, literally. Copper, aluminum, all sizes of rivets. And I find it the easier to do it with the hammer. I, I just don't like the idea of using that heavy gun and the, the different anvils and stuff. Maybe some guys disagree with that, but I like doing it this way. I'm going to do one more now. I got this thing ripped up on a lamp here. Simple. Put the rivet in, you gotta do it anyway. You have the hammers right there, buckle up. Nothing to it. So, you guys want to use the air gun? That's great. Um, I never seen, I never seem to be able to, um, to work them that good. I don't like the heavy weight of it. I don't like the vibration in my hands, you know, grrr, gives me headaches. So, I like to lose a little hammer. It's, Easy, just as easy for me. So, um, we'll go on to the next case. We've got to do a lot of riveting. We'll get all that riveting done, get the heads, ends on, get the cars done. And pretty much after that, it's going to be painting. Painting, and we're ready to rock and roll.